Hi guys, Lindsay here with Storybrook Family Farm. So I am back in the woods again. Um, it is way too incredibly hot to do anything out in the full sun area. Um, but so I thought that I would come back here and get to work on cutting up more firewood. Um, we did have a friend come out yesterday. Him and his wife came out and we are eternally grateful for their help. He had a really, really, really big chainsaw. Well, actually two of them. Um, but he has a really big chainsaw that he was able to cut up all the stuff that I couldn't cut up with my little Ryobi one. Um, so the really big tree that was already knocked down, it was already cut down at some point in the past. It was laying here. This has all been cut up. Um, and it is, you know, really, really nice looking firewood. Um, it obviously is going to need split, um, which that is one of Willie's tasks to do. Um, he does enjoy it. We do have the liberty of borrowing a log splitter, but he says that he likes doing it by hand. So we'll just let him do it by hand um, until he gets tired of doing the really big stuff. Then we'll borrow a log splitter. Um, but so we also got, our friend also was able to cut up this one here. Um, and it goes, you know, quite a ways up there. Um, so it's, it's a lot, a lot of wood that he was able to cut up. And then there's also a really big tree down that way that, um, had fallen some point before we ever got this place um probably a few years ago actually but it's about as big around as, as like I can make my arms go around and he got that most of the way cut up um before it just it got too too dang hot like it's just it's ridiculous like I felt bad for him because he was like dripping sweat and everything and I, just standing there watching him do it I was sweating Tracy was sweating his wife was sweating like I felt bad, but I'm really, really glad that he was able to get it all done yesterday because that's a huge weight off of our shoulders because this wood that's back here, this is like all of our, the rest of our wood pretty much that we're going to be able to, to get from this land um, to burn in our wood burner. Um, we do not have an additional source of heat. Like we don't have, there's a furnace in the house, but it is a fuel oil furnace and it was installed in 1996. Tracy found a paper on it somewhere that said when it was installed, and so chances are it is not functional. Um, there also is not any fuel oil in the tank for us to even mess with the furnace to see if it works. And most places have like a minimum of how much fuel oil you have to buy. Um, we do know that you could technically use diesel fuel to, you know, see if it works and stuff. But fuel oil is like the most expensive way to heat a home. And, you know, kind of poor folk. So definitely not interested in that. Plus, when we set out on this whole journey, we also really wanted to be able to heat with wood. And there is an abundance of wood that has already been cut, that is already seasoned, that is already here. All we have to do is just break it down further and stuff. Um, so we've been doing more research on how much wood we're going to need for the year. Um, and when our friend was out, we showed him the wood pile and asked him, you know, if that was anywhere close. And he's like, no, you guys need way more wood. So... Because he, they primarily heat with wood also, and they've been doing it for a, a good long while and stuff. So we're trying to get close to like four cords of wood for winter time. Um, I was reading something online last night that said for every thousand square feet of, of space you're heating, you need to have two to three cords um, for an, an average winter. So we have probably between with what, with this pile right here that I have, to cut up and then with what's already in the woodshed now and I have some other stuff that's just like laying around that I need to pick up and get it get it out of the elements and stuff before it rains tomorrow um, just since it's been really stinking hot so it's been really good to dry out the wood piles because we didn't have a chance to get them covered before it started raining so everything's kind of damp um, but so I've been taking advantage of the, all the high heat to help dry out the wood piles and stuff so that I could move them into that shelter logic um shed thingy but so from everything that we've seen online um it is like two to three cords is what we're what it's saying is a minimum um i did talk to my dad last night and he said that he would do at a minimum of three cords of wood um for us to have to heat with um but you know we're erring on the side of caution and we're literally just trying to get as much as we can um, so then that way we know for a fact that we're good because this house was abandoned when we got it. Um, it hadn't been lived in and according to neighbors, probably like six years that people haven't lived in it. So, you know, we don't have like somebody that'd be like, Hey, how did this go? 
and stuff. And the people that lived here before, like when they lived here, they were very reckless people and stuff. Um, like the chimney that they had their wood burner in, they never cleaned it. There was not even a clean out shoot thing. There was nothing. Like when the roofer guy took the chimney down, he was like, it's amazing that your house didn't burn to the ground before you guys ever got it. Like it was that level of bad. So we don't know how our house is going to handle the winter time. We obviously don't have, you know, a big fancy crystal ball type thing that tells us, you know, how bad of a winter it's going to be, how intense it's going to be, or how mild it's going to be. So that's, those are things that we don't know. Um, for backup heat sources, besides the wood, we do have like space heaters. And then we also bought one of those like propane fireplace type things that are safe for indoor use that don't require any sort of electricity and they don't require a flue or any sort of chimney to, to vent out. It's a ventless type of thing. So we do have those in place. So we're not solely 100% all the time relying on just wood and stuff, which is, you know, going to be nice because, you know, things happen. But um, so if we are primarily doing wood, though. That's our, that's our hope. That's our goal is to be able to heat the whole space with just the wood and then occasionally using like a space heater or, you know, that little propane thing. Um, we don't want our electric bill to go through the roof, um, you know, back to the whole we're poor people type of thing um so that's why we're trying to use all of the natural abundance is that's already here and stuff plus we you know really like the whole wood heat thing and the whole having free heat um so while our friend was here he actually did tell us about a place that he knows of that they make pallets there and they a lot of times will have like the off cuts of wood and that sort of a thing like that they they're, they're just their scrap and he said that you can usually fill up a trailer for really, really, really cheap um, and that you can get good firewood out of that. So that is a um, uh, backup for next year um, that we're probably going to take advantage of because this year we're only grabbing stuff that's dead here. Like we don't want to cut live stuff down um, if we don't have to. And, you know, we do have different people that we know and stuff that have woods that we could probably go and scavenge for firewood and that sort of a thing. But it'd be really nice next year to to not have to super be panicking about how we're going to get enough firewood and stuff. So we're probably going to check out that pallet company and stuff to see what we can get from there and how much it's going to cost. And by then, at least, we'll actually have an idea as to how many cords of wood we actually need and then we actually will use in a year to heat the house. So it's definitely definitely better to buy when you know how much you need than, you know, being like, oh, well, I have no idea. So I'm going to buy 50 gazillion tons of it and then only need like one ton of it you know you get the point there's only two acres here so there's not that much space to store massive amounts of wood but i'm going to cut this short so i can get busy um i only brought one battery with me with my little chainsaw uh, i did that intentionally so then that way i would be forced to go back to the house more and get drinks um i do have a problem with it being very tunnel vision while i'm working on stuff and i forget to like take potty breaks take drink breaks take food breaks take break breaks that sort of a thing. Um, I just, I get lost in what I'm doing and I just keep going forward. So a lot of times I jokingly say that Tracy makes me lazy because she makes me take breaks and stuff. She's like, no, it's time for a break. Come sit down and stuff. So she does, you know, she inhibits my uh, productivity sometimes, but you know, it's good to take breaks, but I'm already sweating. So I'm going to cut this short now so I can get something done before I have to go get a drink. Um, all right. So if you're enjoying our content, please give our videos a thumbs up share them with your friends on social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to help us grow. We greatly appreciate all of the new subscribers that we have. Um, without you guys, it wouldn't be very worthwhile for me to, you know, keep talking to my phone. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys.